Hey guys, my name is Arbit, and welcome to... Today we are going to talk about DRM. It's an acronym you've probably heard recently if you're a gaming fanatic, and if you've paid any attention to the next-gen console war, it's been a heavily discussed topic. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. According to Wikipedia, it is a class of controversial technologies that are used by hardware manufacturers, publishers, copyright holders, and individuals with the intent to control the use of digital content and devices after sale. Let's be honest now, DRM is a term that has been thrown around by tons of people and it's been quite popular more recently thanks to the Xbox One and its questionable DRM policies, which was later removed due to overwhelming negative feedback. I know a lot of people may be confused when they hear people talk about digital rights management, but that's because the term can refer to a variety of methods. Essentially, companies want to ensure that their products are not being used in an abusive way. A major example would be online pirating. To prevent profit loss, these companies tie in various technologies, such as software, to make sure people cannot do certain things with their products. The technology these companies use are usually referred to as DRM. A simple example of DRM comes from the current Xbox 360 console. You can buy the game console and video games and play them fine. However, if you wish to play multiplayer or get access to Xbox Live Marketplace, you have to pay additional fees for Xbox Live Gold membership. You see, Xbox Live is Microsoft's way of controlling how consumers use their products after sale. It is the same for Sony's PlayStation Plus. Let's review. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. DRM refers to the methods of how an entity can manage, control, or restrict how their product is used after sale. While normally seen as a bad thing, DRM is usually just the ways producers protect themselves from possible ways consumers can abuse their products. So what caused the major backlash regarding Microsoft's new Xbox One and its DRM policy? Well, the major factor came in the form of a 24-hour authentication requirement, which meant that if you were not connected to the internet every 24 hours, you could not play your games, even the non-online single-player ones. Another slightly more vague negative feature was that Microsoft was planning to give developers control over how used games were sold. To the public, it was looking like even for a games a friend lended to you, it would mean that you would have to pay extra fees just to play the game. It's no surprise why Microsoft has announced that both of these features are not going to be present in the Xbox One, which releases later this year, holiday season. Thanks for watching guys. Normally this is where I would put up the previous episode of Game Knowledge for you guys to watch, but uh, seeing how this is episode one, it's gonna be a mystery video. It's quite a classic. Uh, rate the video if you guys enjoyed, and if you have any ideas for future episodes of Game Knowledge, post a comment down below. If you want to be the first to know when new episodes are released, let's go ahead and subscribe to Game for EXP. My name is Arbit, and you guys just learned some Game Knowledge.